What's up, you guys? Short Miss Prime here, doing another Hot Toys figure review on the Iron Man 3 movie masterpiece MMS 214 Mark 39 Star Boost Armor Iron Man 1 6 scale collectible figure. If you're trying to get this figure yourself, you can get it at Big, 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 Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. I give a big thanks to MarvelousNews.com and Budget Stark for making this review possible. Packaging over here looks pretty cool, or pretty standard anyway. We get that beige color from the Mark 42 Iron Man. There's the Mark 39, and then right here on the side, you get these hexagons again and you get this kind of glossy finish for the base section and then it's pretty much all white right over here on the back nah come on hot toys plop mm. this up right over here and like a lot of these iron man 3 hot toys figures it says the house party protocol sir we get some credits right here for the people responsible for making the figure and there's the figure itself all right let's get to it and crack this thing open so here's the figure out of the packaging and a pretty cool iron man figure i really like it a lot uh it's not totally necessary a bit obscure right uh, unless you're trying to collect all of them and everything but really this guy uh, he only showed up on the right side Side, I think of Heartbreaker and that shot where all the armors came through he got hit in the face with an eye beam or something and then shot back at that guy for it but one thing I also really like about this is that this figure lets me lie to myself about what it is because to me this is my Guardians of the Galaxy Iron Man because in the comics Iron Man joins the Guardians of the Galaxy so this being his suborbital suit I'm playing it off as my Guardians of the Galaxy Iron Man even though that armor looks more like the Heartbreaker armor but as you can see very nice paint apps on this I'm gonna take this off I have it actually on this stand right here uh, incorrectly instead of going around the waist I have it around the leg uh, I don't recommend doing that do it at your own risk but we have this dynamic stand right over here we've seen this a few times before it does not light up nothing too spectacular about it or new uh, it does have a clamp right there which works very well and I like how it's padded on the inside and it does have the ultimate bend right over here which is really cool I love that as always read the directions before you start posing the figure around the figure comes with all these batteries right here for the LED lights and you also get this little clear plastic tool right here which I really like a lot now, the figure comes with six different interchangeable hands you get two fist hands right over here you get one left articulate hand you get one left repulsor hand and you get two right repulsor hands what yeah uh, yeah instead of getting one right articulated hand over here he ended up giving me two of the repulsor ones and budget starks gladly gonna swap it out for me and everything we already talked about it. it's on its way with star lord i like how the creases are painted with the white over here and the gold looks really nice too a lot of nice sculpt right there looks pretty dope and this repulsor doesn't really light up for the fisted hands here's a look at the articulated one looking pretty nice except it does have some paint coming off as you can see right over there it just happened like right away. That's a little bit of a bummer, but not the biggest deal in the world. Thumb right here is very loose on mine. And then here's the repulsor blast hand, you know, looking pretty cool. So the figure comes with two different face plates. This is the one that comes with the LED lights coming through. The other one blocks it. I'll show that in a second. This thing's really hard to shoot because that gold paint, it's a really cool looking nice gold paint over here. And I really like the details. I like the gunmetal color. And I think this pattern around the eye section is pretty cool. So anyway, the way you turn this on is you got to pick at this section right over here in the back and just pick that out. That's where the batteries go for the head sculpt and then you just turn it on right over there and then we can just put this right back on and that looks so cool as we did the lighting that looks even cooler wow that is very badass looking very very cool looking Iron Man figure and here's the alternate faceplate which doesn't look bad at all I think it looks all right especially like how those sculpted lines are painted black but I don't know just having those eye sockets filled in that just looks really weird to me and I don't know it makes the face look kind of flat and I don't really like it so much to be honest with you now aside from this honeycomb thing that we see a lot on this figure there's some really nice details on it especially this little deco section right over there you can see there's even some little wear right there where the intake goes same thing right over there that looks really really nice I love the gunmetal color I love that you can see little bits of wear just randomly throughout the figure. I'm really impressed with this sculpt over here. And we get these little gold bits right over there. And then the same thing with this arm. You get that gunmetal color. The inside of the arm. This right shoulder kind of pops off easy for me. But you can see, you know, we get some more details sculpted in there. We get some silver pistons. Looking really nice. Digging that a lot. A lot of really cool sections. These little pieces right here, they all shift around. For the articulation, the arc reactor looks great. And turning that on, you gotta go through the back over here. Now, unfortunately, I broke the figure and you can see the break right over there. I don't know what it was. My fingers were really sweaty or something. I don't know what happened, but um, I, I, I tried to pick this off over here and I just, and it just broke again, actually. I had glued it back on, but you can see there's two tabs. And yeah, only one tab is there. It's supposed to have two. I did read the instructions first and I even saw the Review King's review on this guy and nothing broke on his. Uh, what I think what I was missing was separate 
separating the upper torso section and then flipping this up and that is very important that you do that. That's how I broke it. I forgot to lift it up and I just don't remember it saying that in the directions. Nope, doesn't say that anywhere in the directions at all. But anyway, so now that's completely come off. Uh, this is where you insert the batteries and then you can just turn it on right there and I love that you can see the LED lights coming through the back. That is cool. Haven't seen that on one of these Hot Toys Iron Man figures yet and I just think that looks awesome. Put that back in there, tilt it down and then push down like that. And these lights come through just a little bit better as I dim the lighting over here. And then looking at the front of the figure, there's the arc reactor and you can still see some of the details right there in the sculpt. I think that's pretty cool. I think the arms on this guy are designed and sculpted very well. I really like that gold paint once again. More hexagons. You can see some of that wear right there on the lines. I think that's really dope. I'm looking right over here, you can see some more nice sculpt. And another red triangle. Then right over here you can see how it has this hinge piece right there for the repulsor blast. I think that's pretty cool. You can rotate that around with the wrist too. It's on its own little piece. And then get this lit up over here. You just pick this piece off right there, unscrew that, put the batteries in, and then turn the switch and I think these look really cool, but on the repulsors especially, both sides actually really seem to dim down on me really fast. Now in some poses, this may not line up correctly, which I can imagine would be very irksome for some people, but to me, you know, it really doesn't bother me that much, because when you're looking at them like this, it, you don't really see it. It looks fine. The thing I thought was kind of funny is when I first got this, I thought the little scuffage right over here and right here was just like a manufacturer's defect or something, but then I checked the packaging again, and those little details were made on purpose. And looking at the rest of the figure over here, I just really love the gold, gunmetal, and the white. I think that combo of color choices is very, very nice looking. Just a very cool looking figure. I'm digging it a lot, man. Space boots. Kept those hexagons on there, along with some more of that silver scuffage look. Get some hinges on the boots as well. Not a whole lot going on in the bottom of the feet. And here's looking at the back of the figure. Really nice looking piece. Digging that a lot. I really like those panels on his back. I think that's really, really nice looking. Then these little pieces right here with the little gold bits. I like that too. A lot of nice little details throughout this whole figure. Now as far as articulation goes, it's not the best, nor is it the worst. He can look up a little bit. I wish it could look up actually a bit more. Oh, yep, just pops right off right over there. So a cool thing where Budget Stark actually put a Tony Stark head on there. I tried to do that too, but I couldn't get the peg out of the Tony Stark head. But I wish he could look up a little bit more than that, especially because, you know, he's a space suit. That's literally his space suit. He should be able to look up more. Uh, you can get it to shift down a lot. It does rotate side to side, and you do get some neck pivot it over here so that's pretty cool you get that neck joint in there along with the ball peg uh, you get some nice armpit joint action over here we already saw that earlier it looks pretty good the shoulder pads are on spring-loaded hinges over here so you can let that go and that really helps with articulating and I'm not really getting any real rub or anything and you can move the shoulder outward like this uh, you can move it forward that much you really want to be careful how you position this by the way you don't want this rubbing against here we do get a bicep swivel we get double jointed elbows that bend in that far then the wrist is on a ball peg and it moves in and out and around. When using the ab crunch you want to detach the upper torso from the lower torso like so and you can hear that click sound and it does crunch forward a little bit which isn't too bad. Uh, it does move back as well and you can see that over there so that's pretty cool. You do get a great amount of pivot over here and you can rotate a little bit going side to side. That's actually more of the waist joint moving. Yeah you can't really move that upper torso joint so you have to use both the diaphragm joint and the waist joint to really make it tilt back and crunch forward over here. You get these little spring loaded pieces right here at the hips which are very cool. I like how these look too and that will allow some movement. Now before you move the legs outward uh, you want to bend the leg down first and then move outward. The legs can move outward only that much, and you can get him to kick forward that much. He does have the upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees, really cool piece right here. You can move this knee pad. I like how it's cut like that. I think that's really cool. And then we already looked at these little hinges that move up and down. Uh, you can move the angle downward, move it upward a little bit, and you do get a little bit of side to side motion. You do get some ankle pivot and toe articulation. Now this is a 1 6 scale figure, and it looks like he stands closer to 13 inches tall than 12 inches. Now here's a Star Boost armor compared to a couple other Hot Toys Iron Man three armors. We have the Silver Centurion over here, Heartbreaker review coming soon. And then we have Red Snapper right over there. So you can see this guy stands at about the same size as Heartbreaker, a little bit shorter than Silver Centurion. Then here's Star Boost compared to the Tony Stark Workshop Hot Toys figure along with the Diecast Mark 42. And he stands at about the same height as the Mark 42. Then here he is next to the Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Wave comic version of Iron Man while he was in the Guardians of the Galaxy. And you can see they don't really look anything alike at all. But I don't care. I'm going to lie to myself and say this is the Guardians of the Galaxy Iron Man. If you compare Star Boost to what Kamora's wearing right now, you know there's a similar 
letter D right over there. And of course, here he is next to the Marvel Legends, Big Time Letdown Spider Man. So here's the figure with all the lights on and everything. And as you can see, this left repulsor is already kind of fading out on me. Uh, kind of a bummer. But, you know, I think this looks really cool. Shouldn't be a must get for many people, but I still think it's a very cool figure. It's not a very cheap figure either. Aside from this break right over here, I don't really have any complaints. I really like it a lot. And I hope you guys liked my video. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and check out my review of the Silver Centurion Armor Iron Man right over here. To see my review of the TMNT Blu ray that just came out. That was a pretty fun review to make. And don't forget to check out marvelousnews.com to see a full photo gallery of images from this review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. <laughs>